We all remember those famous words from Russ the Sus. So I'm on the town council in Boulder Creek, and I can come to this meeting. This is a public place. I find it odd that Russ the Sus can't show up when there's actual workshops scheduled, which he should be a part of as part of his responsibilities as a council member. But when there's a private investigation going on, he has rallied and run around the town time and time again. One person looking out the window in a span of five minutes saw him go by town hall four different times. Four times. This is the creep that runs the streets in Otter Creek. Russell has said and done a lot of foolish things. As a matter of fact, I have a piece of paper right here that's going to prove it. But before we look at that, let's flash back to some of his best one-liners. You requested a two-inch meter. Your plumber called me personally. This was not an emergency. There ain't no clerk. There ain't no show. I don't do emails. Who is the bills in the paper? Rough. You got to ask the question, the man who is opposed to those YouTubers, I would have gotten away with all of it if it wasn't for them dang YouTubers. And now all of a sudden, he's got his camera on. He's a public official on public property, getting absolutely horrible counsel from Sharpt. I mean, this woman just goes ahead and incriminates these people further and further and further. And you would think at some point, Russell would just shut up. Russell would just disappear, understanding that he's in it deep. And now we have a recording on his phone. I wonder if that's public information. We're going to find out. There's plenty of illegal things that have happened. You can see I've got papers spread out all the way down the island here. How about this one, George? Let's just take a peek right here. All right, Chiefland Farm Supply. That's in Chiefland. That's a business, right? And they're doing business on behalf of the town of Otter Creek, correct? All right, 615 uh, 20. I'm going to guess that's 2020. I'm just guessing based on the billing cycle. As a matter of fact, okay, yep, it's probably 2020, okay? Now, if you look here, Meeks and Son, $134.27. Okay, hold a second. Hold a second. I have a bill here, which is part of public records. Everything I have here is part of public records. Myself, every resident of Otter Creek, everyone around the world can have access to this, okay? And I have a bill here that is billing Otter Creek, town of Otter Creek, billed to Otter Creek, Otter Creek, Otter Creek, and right here, $134.27 for Meeks and Sons. Now, I'm sure you're wondering what in the world is Meeks and Sons. Well, Meeks and Sons is Russell's um, uh, plumbing business. Now, I'm not saying it's a thriving business. I'm not saying it's a successful business. It was a um, dying business. Now, his son Rocky owns it, and he runs around with it. Now, Rocky is on the commissioner over Levy County. And you're going, hey, are there any family issues there? Now, we've left Rocky out of this because Rocky has stayed out of this. But now he's on public record right here, Meeks and Son, right? He's right here. He's in it right there for $134.27 on a bill to the town of Otter Creek. Let's see what else is on this bill, George. We've got PO Water Plant. That would be your purchase order or it could be... It could, Think of it as the job order, okay? So it's the job. They're saying, hey, this is for the water plant right there. For the water plant, there's $31.93. What is this? Mary DeGroot, accounts clerk, $52.98. We got a total bill down here, new balance, $219.18. Now, why is Meeks and Sons on this bill for the town of Otter Creek? Now, more importantly, we should be asking... Who paid it? We already know who paid it. The town of Otter Creek did, right? They cut out a check and it's the resident's money or it could have been state money. Okay, so it's the residents of Florida's money paying the bill for Meeks and Son. 
Now you could sit there and say, well, let's justify this. Well, Russell probably paid it back. Regardless of whether he paid it back or not, this is never okay. This is illegal. So why is a man running all around in circles in his truck in town, banging on doors when there's a state investigator here? Because he's scared to death. Because he knows what he did. Now, I've got to say this so clearly and so transparently to the precious residents of Otter Creek. Please listen to me. Take back your town. Let me say this again, okay? Whether you like me, whether you love me, or whether you love to hate me, you cannot deny the evidence. You cannot deny the things that have been shown in the corruption with Russell Meeks, Mary DeGroote, Laura Mott, Don the Con, Rosemary, Don the Con's wife, and the list probably goes a little bit further there. We got a lot to dig through still. You can't deny the evidence. The evidence is all there, regardless of what you think about me. Please, people, take back your town. Don't let individuals like Russ the Sus take advantage of you and abuse you and use you. You need that Hudson mentality that started the town of Otter Creek. How do you take your town back? Number one, you run for council. Okay. Number two, you get rid of the individuals that should not be in council. How do we do that? All right, let's look at Florida statutes right here. Okay, we got the 21 Florida statutes right here, and we we have the aspect of the recall petition. Okay, and we can see right here in a municipal. George, can you say Massachusetts? No. Can I say and municipality? I... No. Municipality in a municipality. You like that, right? Mm -hmm. All right. District or fewer than 500 electors. Those are the, the, those are the residents that are actually voting. Last election, there were 71 residents that Registered cast a vote. Registered voters. Registered voters that cast a vote. 71. Okay. So we're well under the 500. That's right here. The petition shall be signed by at least 50 electors. Or by 10% of the total number of the registered electors in the municipality or the district of the preceding municipal election, whichever is greater. Okay, so how do you take it back? You guys all get together and you go to the state and you say, we want a petition. We want a recall petition. Now, George and I can't do this. We are two individuals as residents here in Otter Creek, but you actually are voting residents. We can't do everything. You must take your town back. So what you do is you get your people together and you say, we are going to form a petition and we are going to get it signed by 50 people. 50 people gets Russ the Sus out of office. 50 people gets Don the Khan out of office here in Otter Creek. 71 last year. I bet you could get 50 this year and immediately, boom, they're gone. And you may be thinking, now hold a second. Can we really do that? Yeah, you can do that. And look at this here. If we go even further, why can they be kicked out of office? All right, for any of the following grounds. Failure to attend three regular meetings. Removal of residents from the city. In other words, they're moving out. Now, we already know Russ the Sus has been looking at property in another state up north. We've been told by different individuals. Now, we got number three right here, uh, number four, number five, all of these issues in office, and you've seen evidence of all of these issues already. You've seen it. We've got habitual public intoxication. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, residents of Otter Creek, you know who your town uh, dunk is. All right, I left out an R. The R is for Russell. And then you got conviction of any felony, gross immorality while on duty, off duty, while on vacation. Listen, gross immorality for Russ the Sus, you know what he's done to get the water back on for some of you, what he's required of some of you. It's time. It's time to actually step up. It's time to actually do something and remove this man from your office. He has no power over you. He has no control over you. Don't let him have any more than he already thinks he has. You are the voter. Your council members work for you, not you for them. Always remember that. The power is within you as a populace, as a resident, as a town, 
your vote does matter. What you do does matter and it affects others. And we know what Russell does when he doesn't get his way. Take a look right here. This is from 2010. Now, we've stated this before. We are not the only ones that said unincorporation would be healthy for the town of Otter Creek. When Russell didn't get his way and he wasn't mayor, he actually went and petitioned. Petition number one, requesting citizen initiative charter amendment dissolving Otter Creek from incorporated status. Title, Otter Creek Amendment Dissolving Municipality Placing Remaining Services Under County and or Private Company Administration. Shall Otter Creek be amended to dissolve, expanding the existing county authorized unincorporated municipal service district within Levy County on December, oh, I guess it's 2011, or before, but this went for vote in 2010. So they put it up for vote in 2010, where he attempted to. He never got that far. He never got a following. And then it would go back to the county in 2011. Or before with town commission determining after negotiations which municipal services remaining shall be administered by county and or private entity ownership or management and companies by contracted government. And he checks, yes. I request that the above question as a petition initiative referendum be placed on the December 2010 ballot for the town of Otter Creek. I'm a registered voter in the town of Otter Creek. Whose signature is that, George? Russ. Oh, wow. Whose full name is that? Russell Sr. Okay. Just making sure we are all on the same page. Whose birthday is that? January 22nd, 1951. His parents must be extremely ashamed. As a matter of fact, I'm sure his family is as well. How in the world, how in the world can they even show their face knowing that this man continues to make things worse and worse and worse? How in the world can they not get on the phone with him and say, what in the hails do you think you're doing trying to obstruct Literally trying to obstruct, banging on town hall door, trying to obstruct an open state investigation, showing the investigator how incriminating this man is. I, I just, I literally can't believe it. I mean, I, it still boggles my mind. And, and they don't want us to film? My goodness, these ignorant fools make it so easy, so easy for us to film. You might be saying, Jeremy, you're a little uh, you're a little amped up right now when talking about Russ the Sus. Yeah, I have a problem when people steal, and I have a problem when people lie. How many times do you have to tell people just do the right thing? Now, remember, this all started with water, right? Mary lied. As a matter of fact, let's jump back to that right now. That's it. And you should be treated just like everyone else is. And I'm being billed what other people aren't being billed. So, for example, Otter Creek Post Office is a commercial property. You're not charging them at a commercial rate. You're charging them $22.50. Uh, I have other commercial or business-owned properties around me. For example, the hunting club that's not being charged at a commercial rate. It's being charged at $22.50. So why am I, as a resident of Otter Creek, being charged $50 for something that just out of the blue, you guys pulled and went, okay, I'm going to charge him $50. Yeah. Well, well who, take it up with the council. So and... who made that decision? The council didn't because I've already talked to council members, some of them. So the council doesn't know anything about this. Some of those members, who told you to bill me at $50 a month? Am I the only one in town with a two-inch meter? There's one other. Who's the other? Um. So Mary lies to me about my charges for water, which, by the way, under the direction of Russ the Sus. And then they backpedal. They're scrambling. How in the world are we going to figure this out? And while George and I are back up north, they pass an ordinance that, number one, is illegal. Number two, they didn't even follow, so they illegally did not follow their own ordinance. And yeah, I can show you all that and prove that all as well. And then when Madam Mayor Therese comes in and the new council then she fixes everything and tries to do an actual legal water ordinance. And Russ the Sus says, well, ah, no, no, I want to see the water study. The water study. Okay, here's the water study. 
under the mayor and leadership of Laura Mott. And by the way, Laura, your name is in all of this. Just because you've been smart and you've stayed away, and I would continue to encourage you to stay away. If you don't want to be on camera, if you don't want your name in public information, stay out of the public. Okay, and her name's in all of this. So under mayorship, Laura Mott, which really it wasn't Laura being the mayor, it was Laura was in the title, but it was Russell controlling Laura. She was the puppet. So she was the puppet, and no doubt in a court of law, she would state the exact same thing, and she would be right to do so. Here is the water study that actually happened. So Therese Granger, Madam Mayor, actually went back and got the water study. When Russell declared he wanted it, when Mrs. Granger, Madam Mayor, was actually trying to correct all the water issues. And you can see April 16, 2021, Miss Mott. That would be Laura Mott. Okay, And by, by, I think you have figured this out already. I'm not for Mott. Uh, what she did was completely and totally ridiculous. And she can be held liable for it as well. So if we look at this water study, basically in a nutshell, what we're seeing in all these public records, the financial statements of the water fund found that in 2020, charges for the services and miscellaneous charges were $27,422.32. Okay, so just so we're all on the same page, that's how much they brought in. That's the income. That's what they were paid by the residents of Otter Creek. Now let's look at expenses. Required expenses for 2021, including operating expenses, capital improvements, miscellaneous expenses, 36478 Okay. Now we know why Northerner comes in. They have bigotry and racism, and they go, hey, we're going to try and get what we can out of them. They have no money. And they look at somebody coming in and go, well, we can get it out of them. They all knew that we overpaid for the property. And I'll clearly state with you, per acre at that time, George and I overpaid for the property. We did. And one of the worst things that we felt happened is the realtor put a flyer in every single Otter Creek's residence post office box stating how much we paid. Now, that's public information. You can get it from the auditor's site anyway, right? But to sit there and boast in regards to in the mailboxes, we just went, oh boy, here we go. Here we go. Let's see who else can take advantage of the northerner who paid too much money for the southern property. Which, by the way, that property now has more than doubled in value. We overpaid at that time, which was an investment. And right now, we honestly could sell it for well double than what we paid for it. And frankly, probably triple. We're not looking to sell. But that's what would be, happen at that point in time. So we, we see here the money needed, water drinking revenue requirements. Here's the survey. Now, I'm not going to show everything in here. A lot of this... We're going to have this in ebook form for everybody who wants to purchase it and download it. Remember, all of this cost me over $5,000. You don't just get free information and in print form or digital form from any public entity. You have to pay for it. There's man hours or woman hours involved in it. There's paper involved in it, the whole deal. We paid over $5,000 for everything. But we're going to share it with everybody who wants to see it as well. Here's where things get interesting. The town of Otter Creek, water rate scenario. That does not say Severino, George, like Don the Con. That's oh, a scenario. And there's an S at the end of there, Creek. There is. Whoa, there's Creeks? Creeks. Oh, my town goodness. Town of Otter Creeks. We're going to do Christmas in the Creeks <laughs> next year. That's how we're going bigger. We're going with two Creeks instead Multiple of one. Multiple Creeks. All right, let's look at this. So what they're saying is the rate schedule as of 10-01-2021, they would finally, now, as I share this with you, Keep in mind that everybody paid the same. Everybody paid the same. We've shown that email to you before where everybody paid the same Whether flat they're rate, commercial or except residential. Except for me. Yep. Were there commercial properties here in the town of Otter Creek? Yes. You had the post office. You have Herschel's General Store. You have Otter Creek Christian School, Otter Creek Baptist Church. You have Shady Oaks Campground. Uh, you had the Ark of Levy County. Guess what they all paid? $22.50. Guess what they charged me? $50. And then double. claimed I was a commercial property, even though I am zoned as residential property. Now, we've shown that email. We can show it again, or you can just go back and see it. So here's what they finally say with the water study. All right, start charging based on meter size. All right, so they say we're going to charge 
two inches, 69.59 for 8,001 gallons and up. It's going to be seven bucks per. So they're doing a gradual increase. Okay, so look at this. 2022. Now my two inch would go to 71.68. Okay, in 2023, my two inch would go to 73.83. In uh, 2024, 76.04. In revenues, all of a sudden, revenues would actually meet the expenses in this water study. Reserves, you can see reserves. Typical monthly 2,000 gallon bill. All right, typical 3,000 gallon bill. They're telling you how much it would be. Okay, and it goes on and on and on. Okay, so here's what this means. Russ the Sus wanted the study. This is an opinion. That's all it is. Okay? I can give you the exact same study. I can look at your profit and your loss. I can look at your income and your expenses and say, you every year consistently are losing money. And then I can look at what you're doing to the residents. And I can say, you're stealing from Jeremy instead of correcting this issue on a whole. Here's what this study says. You have to charge more for water. That's what the study says. Now, what Madam Mayor Therese did was said, we're going to make this fair for everybody. We're going to charge by gallons. And that's what we're buying, right? Gallons of water. And that's fair across the board for everybody. Goes back to the flat fee. And Russell goes, nope, nope, nope. I want the study. The study isn't legal. The study means absolutely nothing. The study is an opinion that is telling the people of Otter Creek, you are losing money. You have to charge more. You don't just charge one person more, though. Let's look at a few other things that were going on in that office. For example, we know about the fraud with the Sam's Club card. With Mary Mary, fraud is scary. There you have it, right there. Hey, Mary! <laughs> the evidence is smoking. It is hot, okay? Uh, well, what about what about what Mary was doing in there? Um, okay, let's look at this right here. Okay, what was Mary doing? Mary was creating documents for other organizations. She was not doing the work of Otter Creek. You're a part-time person. You do part-time work at home. Now, some of you are thinking, well, that's not a problem if she did it off the clock. Yeah, it is a problem. The utilities are being used. The lights are being used. The computers are being used. The, for example, let me, let me share it with you this way. Uh, if I use my vehicle for somebody else's business needs, the IRS says that they have to pay me, what is it now, like 55 cents a mile? Mm -hmm. Because that not only gasoline, that's wear and tear. Now, what do you think the IRS is going to say about Mary using all the computers and all the all the uh, assets of town hall, even if she was clocked out. There's wear and tear. She should have never been using it. There's utilities going on. She should have never been using it. She should not have had her own kitchen table in town hall. It's not her home. And the people are paying all those bills. It is theft. It's theft of time. It's theft of resources. You name it. If you want to, you can try and justify it any way you can. For Mary, that doesn't make it right. In the court of law, she'd be found guilty. So let's see what she was doing right here. All right, Otter Creek. Oh, well, we already screwed that up. No space there. Otter Creek Baptist Church, quarterly business meeting, January 19th, 2022. What is she doing typing up the minutes for the meeting of Otter Creek Baptist Church when her job in Otter Creek Town Hall is to type up the minutes for Otter Creek Town Hall? Mm -hmm. But here we are. There's no affiliation with the church. None in town whatsoever. Hall. Well, for all of you out there that want to go, church and state, separation of church and state, separation of. Ah! There you have it, okay? There was no separation of church and state, which most of you don't understand what that means anyway in the separation of church and state. I've stated this in the past, I'm going to state it again. It means the state cannot declare one church must be there for worship. It cannot be the place everybody has to go. You have freedom to worship. That's what separation of church and state means. But here we go. Uh, the quarterly business meeting of Otter Creek Baptist Church was held on January 19, 2022. Jason Faircloth. By the way, Jason, did you know that um, did you know that Mary has now incriminated you? Because you are now part of public records. Did you have any idea Mary was doing this? Do you understand the implications that this means for the church? 
Do you under, I don't think the residents and the people of Otter Creek understand the consequences, the implications, the things that have happened in this town hall and what that means to them. Your name can be viewed around the world now. Any, your, your address, your phone number, anything, anything, because she did this in town hall. It's all public information. So, Let's see, Jason Faircloth opened with prayer, which I appreciate. Jason, thank you for praying. Uh, I want to encourage you to be praying for Otter Creek as a whole because they are in a hole. And the meeting was called to order at 6 p.m. Ms. Perry passed out the financial reports for the months of October, November, and December 2021. The beginning balance of October 21 was 37000 Total church income with tithes and offerings was 23000 Well, this is the church that we offered 150000 to pay for this building, but... They didn't follow up with us. Okay. Uh, expenditures were $23,000 for the quarter, leaving a net income of $109.96. Okay. They had a net income of $109. Now we know why they didn't get the ARC building. Building fund uh, has about... Oh, wait. Hold a second. They have a building fund. December 31st, 2021 was $22,000. Uh, Mary Ellen DeGroote accepted treasurer's report, seconded by Shirley Dykes, and was passed unanimously. There were several expenses occurred as a result of a lightning strike repaired to the septic system, was $2,400, as, as well as the havoc wreaked on, I'm not joking, she actually typed that, havoc wreaked on the internet. Not sure, but we do know that Mary created this on April 27th, 2022 at 2.08 p.m. Now, what were the hours for town hall? That I don't remember, but I know regardless of what time it was, Mary should have never been doing this on town hall equipment, in the town hall office, using town hall resources, utilities, and it goes on and on. Remember, you're the ones that keep crying out separation of church and state, and she put them right together. All right, you don't think that's enough? How about this? Um, I am going to, here, you can, you can show this. Meeks and Son Plumbing. And Mary created this October 5th, 2020. Looking forward to your arrival, ready to start work on November 19th. Sincerely, Russell Meeks Sr. Mary created this on October 12th, 2020 at 11.56 a.m. Now, we know that Town Hall opened at 10, and it typically closed at 2. And you could go, well, if 11.56, she was on lunch. Doesn't matter. She should have never, ever, 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 ever in a million years been creating documents for Meeks and Sons Plumbing. Complete and total, complete and total conflict of interest. Okay. Uh, so since she was doing all that, what wasn't she doing? All right, well, let's take a look here. This here is a complete and total failure for the audit in February 2023. This is a threatening letter saying, you screwed up, you didn't send any information, you didn't do what you need to do, this is a failure notice, and you're going to be fined, and there's consequences, and the town is going to lose money. So why Mary Mary is doing all of these things under the leadership, under the authority, under the supervision of Russ the Sus. The town of Otter Creek is getting threatening letters and losing money left and right. The DOR will begin withholding certain state revenues from your municipality. I said that right, right? It's just like Massachusetts. And you wonder why they were so active to steal money from me. Remember when Albert Fuller stated publicly he had nothing to do with permits? That's odd because I got information here on my neighbors, Brian and Tina Haley. Which, by the way, it's all public record. And you might remember, Tina is one of the seven siblings that sold us the property illegally with known encroachments. And we can still sue and we can get our $250,000 back in cash because they sold it to us illegally with known encroachments. That's the part. It was known encroachments. They didn't disclose it. Now, they're not out of the woods yet. We're still going after them legally for our money back. We're sick and tired of them. And we're sick and tired of everything they've continued to do and all the havoc and the trespassing and cutting middle fingers, even though that middle finger, oh my goodness, mm, what an iconic piece of art. It is famous. It's hard to be mad at somebody that creates such a piece of art. But 
the, the, the reasoning behind it, he was a drunk coming over and trespassing, and he was damaging property. So statute of limitations in most states, 10 years. We have plenty of time. So we have other things that we're focusing on right now. We will get back to Brian and Tina. Let's get back to here. Okay. Mary de Groot right here to Mr. Fuller. Hi, Albert. Would you take a look at this request and determine what they need to get a permitted and build? Thanks, M. Hold a second. No. Mr. Fuller said that he had nothing to do with permitting. Nothing. Okay, well, let's see what this permit is about. Let's take a peek here. Let's see what's... Oh, there it is. Haley permit request right there. Oh, by the way, if you're upset I'm showing your information, it's public. Just keep that in mind. Should have never submitted it if you didn't want it to be a part of this. Let's take a look here. We got address right here. Fee of $150 right there. Legal description. Uh, we've got property owners, Brian T. Haley, Tina L. Haley. We've got other information down here as well. We've got new construction. Okay, a detached 24 by 34. Uh, 35 metal garage with concrete foundation installed approximately 20 feet south of existing house with minimum setback of 50 feet from property line. All right. Cost of improvements, $20,000. It's going to be, they're going to use Carolina carports. Uh, concrete foundation will be provided by local licensed contractor determined upon approval of permit. Uh, we've got some Levy County information in here and land use. We've got the plot. Oh, look, George, you want to know where our, our property is? Mm -hmm. Here, 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 here. All around. All around. It surrounds them. Completely and totally surrounds them. So I find it a little odd that um, Albert, who says he has nothing to do with permitting, then Mary's having a conversation with him in regards to Brian and Tina's permit. Now, that garage has been built. It's completely and totally finished. Why? I don't know. Why do they still live in Otter Creek? Beats me. You would think that they would be smart enough to leave. They've caused enough problems, but they're still there. Now, here's the problem that really goes on in my mind. Albert's saying he has nothing to do with permitting, and Mary says, talk to them, figure it out, all they're permitting. So he obviously was involved in permitting. But Russ the Sus illegally pulling permits from other people. Again, it all comes down to corruption and targeting with this man. This here, Mary's typed up confession of when she assaults me, I find rather interesting, particularly one, one area where it says, uh, I was throwing him out of a public place. If I had inadvertently touched him, he was able to prove it with his scripted video. Oh my so does goodness. does that mean she was scripted? So she must be an employee now. She's a paid actor. I, I actually scripted her placing her hands on me and pushing me out of the town hall meeting. Or a public Listen, building, public let's office. Let's just face it. Nobody in the world knows what twist and turn is coming next. This is all real, all over water, and it's come to this.